In this video, we're going to look at the LZX DSG3 Dual Shape Generator, and incidentally explore some of the features of the ESG3 encoder. We'll focus on getting the most out of just these two modules in a system with one or two other utilities or some other Eurorack audio modules. DSG3 is one of the most advanced analog modules LZX has ever released. It's capable of an extraordinary amount of power in a fairly small space and at a fairly low price. As the name would imply, DSG3 consists of two identical shape generators, which are based on a set of four individual ramps with a series of analog manipulators and compositors. So let's dive right in. Here I have DSG3 zeroed out, so these bottom switches are in their middle position, and the top switches are both flipped up. Each shape generator has four individual outputs. We've got a maximum, a minimum, a sum, and an absolute output. These are a combination of the two ramp shapes. One of the ramps is a horizontal ramp that goes left to right across the screen, and the other is a vertical that goes from top to bottom. So we can see some different combinations of these. If I up the contrast on my encoder, the shapes come into crisper focus. So these top switches will invert the different ramps. Below that, we have a full wave rectification processor, which you can also think of as a frequency multiplier. So you can see now we have two ramps, now we have four, and we have these for each channel. So in the middle, we just have one ramp that goes across the whole screen, multiply it to two, multiply it to four, and we can do the same thing for each. And below that, we have a wave shaper, and this will change the shape of the waveform. So all in all, without patching anything, we have a huge variety of different shapes that we can achieve. So you can flip through some of those. And then we also have four separate outputs, and each of these is going to give us a very different result. So absolute is going to typically be the most complex, and the sum is just going to be a basic mixing of the two. Minimum is going to find the minimum value of the two ramps, and maximum is going to find the maximum. Now you can also plug additional inputs to replace either of the two ramps. We'll look at that in a later example. To make things more interesting, let's get some modulation involved. So I'm going to take the absolute output, one channel of the shape generator, and put that into a mixer. This is a processor module from LZX, but any mixer will do the trick here. Oops. Take the output. And I'm going to start to mix in some modulation. So we could just take a simple LFO and mix that with the output of our shape generator. And so already we're getting some nicely animated shapes. Now regular LFO works pretty good, but I could also use something that's audio driven. So here I'm using a sensory translator and it's taking the sound of my voice and turning it into animation. So we can adjust this to be a little bit stronger. Cool. And so now we can flip through the different shapes and you could start to see, you can get a whole lot of variation just with one channel of our shape generator, a simple modulation source, and the encoder to sort of modulate the different colors. Let's go like this. Awesome. <clears throat> of course, we have many outputs here, and we have many inputs in the encoder. So we could start to bring in the sum into the green channel, and let's say the max into the blue channel. So we can really take advantage of all these different inputs. And we could start to get a nice uh, plaid pattern that might look good on a sweater, or perhaps a pair of winter pants. And so with just a handful of simple modules, you can start to get really nice complex patterns. In our next patch, let's look at what happens when we use these external inputs. So as we saw before, each individual channel of the dual shape generator is very powerful, and obviously using the two in combination is even more so. 
So here I'm looking at the output of each channel of the dual shape generator. So you can see we can start to get some cool stuff by going into different channels in the encoder. But we can also use it to modulate itself. So for example, I could take another output of the second shape generator and plug it into one of the inputs on my first shape generator. What this is doing is it's overriding the initial ramp and replacing it with what's coming out of here. So let me take this output out now so we don't get confused. But you can see, before I do that, that as I change the shape that's showing up in blue, it's also changing the shape that's showing up in red. And that's because this is overriding that internal ramp. So now let's make things clear by going back to monochrome. So here, all of our controls, even though we've overridden that internal ramp, still function. So our invert is still going to invert the second shape coming in, and our rectifier is still going to multiply that shape. So here in the middle, we see just the basic shape that's coming in. And we can use this wave shaper to change the curvature of that wave shape. So this opens up a ton of different possibilities. And here, obviously, we're just looking at the output of the dual shape generator. We can also plug in external sources. So I'm going to show you what I have over here really quick. Let's unplug that for just a second. And down here, I have an audio oscillator. This is coming from a mob of emus, which is a digital oscillator, and I just have these tuned to a few different outputs. So let's look at this one. So if you were to hear this, this would just be an audio signal. Uh, you can use any audio oscillator to generate these kinds of horizontal bars. They're slowly scrolling, so that's going to give us some animation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that audio oscillator, and I'm going to plug that into the input in one of our shape generators. And you see it's going to give us some movement. So that scrolling horizontal bar is now replacing the internal ramp. And I can select a slower speed oscillator. There we go. And just so you can see this again, that's what the actual oscillator is doing. And when we plug it into the shape generator, we get it influencing the shape. And again, we can invert it and we can rectify it slash multiply it. So now we get a whole bunch of little bars within that bigger bar. And again, we can change its wave shape. So you can see, once again, we're getting really complex results from a very small number of modules and patches. And I'd like to point out that I used this oscillator to replace the horizontal ramp, but you could also use the other input. It's now taking the sum of two signals, which are both essentially horizontal bars. And while this may have some limited uses, I generally find it's better to plug audio rate oscillators into these right inputs. So you could switch through a bunch of different possibilities. And again, you could start to see how interesting this is. And once again, just for fun, we have a whole bunch of other outputs available here. So we might as well start patching those into our encoder as well. And then you can play with your color mix and your contrast controls and start to get something a little bit more complicated over here. So to take this one step further, I'm going to take this modulation source and I'm going to plug it into a VCA. The LZX bridge has a fader built in, which works pretty similarly to a voltage controlled amplifier that you might find on a regular audio synth. And you could use any VCA for this purpose or any crossfader. So I'll take the output back into our input here. And then I'm just going to use a basic LFO to voltage control that VCA. And so as I speed up this LFO, 
it's going to let that horizontal modulation in. And that just gives us something a little bit more interesting. So now we can control when the modulation actually happens. We could also take another output from our oscillator, plug that into the other channel of the VCA, so then we get kind of wider and thinner sources. So if you're new to video synthesis, but you already have some other Eurorack modules like basic oscillators, VCAs, and LFOs, the dual shape generator and encoder combo gives you an enormous playground to explore. In our next patch example, we'll look at the expanded possibilities of adding some basic LZX video module utilities. So if you're already familiar with video synthesis, you'll understand the power of processing basic ramps with modules like wave multipliers, rectifiers, and keyers. With the increased complexity of the dual shape generator, you could take these ideas even further. So I'm going to take an output from the shape generator into stairs. If you're familiar with staircase, this operation is very similar. And I'll go out of the two output. And what you can see here is we can adjust the number of steps and the phase. And this is going to do something very similar to what happens here with our rectifier. So we could see that we're getting more steps within that gradient. If I go up to 64, we get a whole lot more. So we have all these different outputs, 8, 16, 32, and these are going to just add some additional complexity to our shape. So this gets into very psychedelic op art territory very quickly. And of course we increase our contrast. We can get more sharpness here on the output and our brightness. And of course we can modulate this. So we could take our other shape output and put that into, let's say the phase control voltage. And then we start to get some really cool, complex stuff. Now let's take another output and go into a keychain. Now this is just a basic keyer, basic utility keyer. We can put this into another channel input on our encoder. And you see what that's starting to do. So now we're getting this nice flat shape, which is what you would expect from a keyer. If you're unfamiliar with keyers, they basically look at a waveform and they extract everything above or below a given value. So this is going to turn into a nice flat shape here. And again, we can add some CV control from our other shape generator. So I'm basically keying one shape and multiplying the other and using the opposing shapes to CV each other. So now when I switch, I'm going to get all these wonderfully interconnected patterns. And again, I'm going to use this scrolling bar from earlier to break one of these connections. We'll see which one's more, more interesting here. That one looks a little bit nicer. So we can start to get some movement going on. I'll just fine tune this a little bit. There we go. And we continue playing with some of the different options we hear. Now these connections are all normaled. So these are all flowing down into the different channels. So there's no reason we couldn't go and plug this back into the shape generator and get some feedback happening. So you can go very extreme on your feedback here, or just very subtle. You could also try going into the other input just to see what would happen. Very cool. And then we could CV this with, say, another oscillator. Oh, there we go. And that's going to give us just a little bit more movement.
Then we can adjust these steps. We have a phase and all of our CV controls. And there you have a pretty basic patch with just a handful of utilities. So in these patches, we really tried to look at using DSG in a very minimal context. Whether you just have a handful of Eurorack modules and an encoder and want to get started with video synthesis, or if you're slowly building a small Gen 3 setup, this video should give you some ideas of how to get started working with your DSG3. In future videos exploring the other Gen 3 modules, we'll continue to dive into some of the more complicated things you can do with GSG3. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave any questions you may have in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.